coming up on his third season as a starter for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, here to talk about the 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 revamped Major League Baseball season and what that's going to look like. Uh, it's my friend and All Star pitcher, uh, Mr. Walker Bueller. Would you get a beagle? We got a poikin span. It's like a little brown. And what can it do? Can it jump high or anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It hunts him. Really? Oh, yeah. Now, now, how much training goes into training like a hunting dog? I'm going to send it away. You oh, have to send really? it away for like six months. No way. To, out of America or no? No, to uh, that breeds like all South Carolina. So you send it there or Huntsville maybe. Dude, I'd send that little bastard to Japan. Dude, have him come back like a little ninja, you know? <laughs> yeah, then they wouldn't know what ducks are looking for. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true, dude. But he'd be able to sneak into somebody's house at night, though. For sure. Real the quiet. ninja hunting dog. He'd be able to use a sword. You'd be like, dang, that's the only dog that can use a sword, <laughs> man. Walker Bueller, you guys are back in uh, training camp. Or Now, what do you guys, what does baseball call it? Uh, they're, well, I've heard summer camp, which is an interesting one. It sounds like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm going to swim in a lake <laughs> yeah. or something. Um, but no, I think kind of spring training 2.0 is what they're kind of going with. And so you were saying you had a place out here in LA and then you had to get, you had to, you were ready to come back for the season, right? Mm -hmm. And then you had to just nix it. Yeah. So for us, we kind of get six, eight month leases, just try and find somewhere for the season. And then I got wrangled into a 10 month lease because I really wanted this place. And I was up in the hills and oh. it was like, this is my last year on my first part of my rookie deal. So I was like, all right, I'll just get the cool one. Spend a little extra I'm going to splurge a little bit. And then we're not here for three months. So, uh, no, I got lucky. Somebody leased it out and I got to find another place. But, uh, yeah, we were a little disappointed. Dang. And so the time at home, were, were you like uncertain up until the last minute? Or is like, is the players, like who's communicating with the excuse me who's communicating with the players like we're gonna do something we're not gonna play we are like is there how does that work for you guys yeah so we have obviously our, we have our big players union right but we have like a rep for each team and of course i got thrown into being our rep two weeks before baseball ended up coming back so i jumped into this stuff like so way late the team's rep the dodgers yeah so it was jt and now i'm i'm our rep but I've been kind of just sitting back, chilling, waiting on to hear when we we're gonna play, and then two weeks before everything kind of came together, it was like, "Hey, walk now, you're talking for us." So, a lot of group me's, a lot of said, "Hey, what do you guys think?" Damn. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty complicated. All the shit, you know, all the stuff that goes into it that I didn't even really know about, and then it's like, "Hey, you're right in the middle of it." So, so you, it's been a little bit of a learning curve, kind of, huh? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and do what is it, what's going to be different about the season? So the season is happening. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in spring training, summer camp 2.0 right now. Yes. And what's going to be different about the season? Well, first off, they're telling us that you can only have a certain amount of guys in the dugout, which is weird because we all sit in there and hang out and bullshit and whatever during the games. So now they're saying if you're not playing, you have to sit in the stands. So no there are going to be fans in and the stands, oh, there are except they're going to be us. <laughs> Wearing our full uniforms. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, you, you should be allowed to change into something more relaxing. I right. Feel like. I mean, it's, yeah, it's odd. I told, I talked to Curtis the other day and I told him, hey, they also said we can go home, which is like not something that has ever been okay. So I told him, hey, I'm, I may never watch you throw live all year. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm just going to sit in the pool and watch you on TV <laughs> if I can leave. <laughs> Oh, because you wouldn't even have to be there because usually the bullpen's there and stuff, you mean. Right, the bullpen will still be out there, but us, we'll just, starting pitchers usually sit right there in the dugout and kind of hang out. So, if we can leave. Damn, it's almost like you think you'll miss that part? Yeah, you know what's weird is in Asia, leave. that's like standard operating procedure for them. So, they leave what? Like, if they're not pitching, they're not there? Yeah, they go in during the, you know, during the afternoon, get their stuff done. An hour before the game, they just head out. But uh, we had a Korean guy, Hunjin Ryu that he like hated watching games because he'd never done it in his wow. whole life and then he comes to america and like expected to stay <laughs> oh, forever dang. 
Dude, I'm not kidding you. That guy would be out of the locker room within five <laughs> minutes of the last out. I don't even think he showered at the field. I think he just threw his shit he on his roll. <laughs> no, he he's just, like, I'm not even getting paid for this overtime. He's like, I want to go to dinner. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I went to actually a baseball game one time in Japan. Really? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I went to one in Japan, and I went to one in Cuba once. Um, Cuba? Yeah, I went to... I was in this school, like this school program, and yeah. we got to go abroad. And and one of the like things we got to do when we were there was uh, go to baseball. Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. I got sweet. I got to play in Cuba for a week, which no was way. wild. Yeah. So I guess they have some sports diplomacy law or something. Like at that time, we were like the only Americans ever allowed in there. Yeah. And so we went, and we lost all five games. I was really happy On about purpose? that. Well, maybe subliminally. Okay. I don't think you really want to win over there. Right. But we had a good time. It was fun. Dang. And do you notice anything different like about do you notice anything different about the way that they were that they play or anything? Yeah, like I will tell you the big the weirdest thing that they do. So you know how like if you strike somebody out, they throw the ball around mm -hmm. and it just goes once to the third baseman, to the shortstop, to the second baseman, and they throw it back to the pitcher. That's how they do it here in the US? Yes. Okay. In Cuba they make thirty throws. They really? throw it to the catcher, the pitcher will get it, throw it back to the shortstop. <laughs> it, 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 the game's take That kid 40 in major minutes. league gets it, he throws it in the home plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fan gets to toss one in. I mean it's wild. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and the games took like 30 minutes longer because they're just flinging the ball around after every strikeout. That's pretty wild. I remember one time, um, actually, because one of the things I was doing when I was traveling, I went to on this thing called Semester at Sea, and it was like a school that yeah. goes on a, on a ship and takes you to different countries when you're a student. And so we went to uh, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so I remember just walking around during the day and playing pickup basketball games and stuff. <laughs> And the thing that they do there, like in that was different. After somebody scores, they like run it back. Like whoever gets out of the net runs it. You don't dribble it or pass it up. You run it up to the top of the top of the key and then start the game again. What? Yeah, it's really bizarre, dude. And they would kind of frown on you. Like if you threw it up there, they would kind of throw it back, and you had to like run it. Like hey, f stop. You yeah, got yeah. It was like, and it feels weird just to run with a basketball, you know? Yeah, so you're playing running back. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a crime. So, but I remember that was like the strangest thing. Uh, that I remember that was just like um, like a sport in a different country. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard that. So with the dugout, say in a regular game, you know, mm -hmm. can you go over to the other team's dugout or? No. If you do that, normally there's a fight involved. I don't know if you saw last year, there was a guy named Amir Garrett who pitches for the Reds. Mm -mm. He played basketball at St. John's. So he's a big, tall dude, reliever for the Reds. Right. And they were – Reds and Pirates had this whole beef all year. He just – Ran directly at their dugout, oh one on 30. Oh, wait, really? <laughs> and started throwing bombs at people. <laughs> I'd play with that catcher too, Kyle Farmer. He seemed like he was ready to cause a little trouble too, man. Georgia boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Fui's been traded so much, huh? Well, we. He seems like that girl in the NBA that everybody bangs. I can't remember her name. Yeah, so they came to get him out of there. And then he said, all right, come on. Oh, damn. This guy. That's a bad boy. I think that one guy. full on. Oh, he tried to slap. <laughs> Look at them all. <laughs> They're like, all right. <laughs> this is the Yeah, it is a little bit, man. Yeah, this is as, that's as good as it gets in a baseball brawl. Wow. There. So if you're on the mound, right? Now, usually it seems like the pitcher is kind of the one that starts the brawl. Yeah, it, it usually boils down to somebody getting hit. So the pitcher is always involved. Now... Me being a smaller guy, we we do rehearse my moves if anything like that ever happens. Like, what uh, do you mean? Like, you rehearse your moves? Well, somebody's going to run at me if I ever get into one of these situations. Okay, right? so yeah, because you'll hit them on accident. Yes. Okay. On okay. accident. <laughs> yeah. I love and then so they'll come at you. So you have it kind of rehearsed what to do then? Right, because they're going to be bigger than me. Right. Because right? I'm small. Right. So we've boiled down. I either have to slowly creep, wait for the corner infielders to come and get them for me. Right. Or I got to go with a drop kick. That's, okay. Those are really oh, my only man. two options. <laughs> I think it's a side, you know, it's a it's a mass thing. I just can't. Yeah. Or you just fling the glove. That one's been done before. 
Uh, how do you here move this a little closer if you don't mind uh how do you so because your size like how does your size compare to to some of the pitchers that are out there because kershaw is way taller than you yeah kersh is about two inches taller but he's about 40 pounds heavier than okay me. 30 yeah. pounds heavier okay. than me i'll give him the benefit right of the doubt there um yeah i'm just i'm skinny you know compared to most guys most guys are pretty thick and does one of your arms weigh more than the other one of your arms or not you know i don't know I think they're probably pretty close. I would imagine the right one's a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. um, just because the extra ligament in there, so maybe a couple ounces heavier. Because you, what you got an extra ligament put in? Yeah, so I, I tore the one, but they left it and put a new one in there. So where did they get that one from? They cut it right out of my wrist. And is that Tommy so John maybe surgery? It's not, or no? Yeah, that's Tommy John. Okay, so Tommy John surgery is in the. Yeah, so you, I can, you can see the scar here is right here. Oh wow! But they cut. So if you go like this, and then move your finger up see that mm -hmm. big line i've yep, got it on middle. that one but not on this one because that's what they cut out and put back in my elbow wow yeah so uh, yeah because i always thought tommy john was a shoulder it's not no that's tommy john's the elbow labrum or rotator cuff is a shoulder that was, that's a bad deal it is yeah tommy john they're like 90 percent with now like you're probably gonna be fine and labrum you, labrum's still like 50. do you know if you is there a certain like life expectancy on those parts of a pitcher's body where you like okay like an almost like an oil change okay at three years i got to take it in for this and then at nine years i got to take it in for um, this. um yeah you hope you never have them like kershaw's never had an elbow or anything like that but once you have one they say you got about eight years with that new ligament and they'll have to do something to to keep it going but yeah i'm on year five on my new one so damn we're hoping it'll it'll you know exceed those those numbers. And did you feel different once you got it in? Oh yeah, I started throwing four or five miles an hour harder. No way. Oh yeah, you got twelve months of rehab, so you just sit there and lift and watch baseball and play golf basically. And then I started was throwing way harder, and I got to the big leagues really quick after that, just because it made the game a lot easier. Oh, you got it in harder. college? I got it right after I signed in the pros. Okay. So, because I know you're out of, you're from Kentucky. That's where mm -hmm. you, and that's where you live now, also, right? Yep. And yep. um, and then you went to Vanderbilt. Yep. Three years there. And then that's when you get into the pros. Yep. So you get so, drafted after your junior season, typically. And you still come back for your senior season? No, 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 no. So I never graduated. None of that. I didn't graduate. I only played three years. Got mm -hmm. drafted, and then you move on. Okay. And now, when you get drafted, a lot of times it's like, it seems like these guys. Where did you get drafted at? Um, what, what do you mean? Like you get drafted at certain picks, right? Yeah. So I was a 24th pick. Okay. But which for most people would be a really cool thing. Your first round pick. I was the third guy on our team to get drafted. Wow. So it was kind of like, I was happy, but I was also a little, you well, know, pissed. Right. But you get a little pissed all the time about a lot of stuff though. Yeah. I'm kind of really angry that way. Yeah. You know, you get that fire in you a little bit. Yeah. A little jealous, a little, uh, little competitive. That, that chip way. on your shoulder. Yeah. You have to be, I always tell everyone, my dad's like five foot eight. No and I was like, way. one of the only things he ever gave me was my Napoleon complex. Right. You know, I'm almost six, two probably. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I'm about five foot four. <laughs> Dude, that's funny. It's like this this guy has the tallest Napoleon complex we've ever seen. Borderline. I think it's it's up there probably. And uh and what did your dad do? What what did your dad do for work? So he works Bank of America, kind of boring commercial lending stuff, but uh yeah, he does and He that. still does? Yeah, he actually just moved to Irvine, so we're really excited oh, to, wow. to have him out here. So I'll get to see him more. He's been in Colorado the past few years, so And what about your mom? My mom's an attorney in Lexington, so she oh, has wow. her own little own little law firm there and, and does all that stuff. But she, she used to tell me her, my favorite thing was she would tell me a case when I was like six years old, uh -huh. and I would tell her what I think it was worth. And I'd be within like <laughs> 30 grand <laughs> every <Yeah>. time. <laughs> like, yeah, they left this gauze in this woman. I'm like, 1.7, not 1.6. Yeah, 1. 6. yeah. yeah. So like, that's 4,800, Ma. Yeah. That's 4,800. She said I had some weird knack for it, but I always said that's probably what I would do if I didn't play, but. I'm kind of glad I don't have to do that shit. Yeah. Did you, um, did you, uh, well, tell me a, a little bit more about some of the new rules that are going to be going on. Okay. So they're saying we can't spit. Number really? one. So uh, you watch a baseball game, you, you know, people spit. Cause of so the, that's yeah. Gonna, that's going to be interesting. They're saying instead of spitting, we're going to have a wet rag in our back pocket no. so we can touch that and then go to the ball. Cause you need a little moisture sometimes. So we'll see how long that one lasts, I think. Um, obviously, the dugout stuff. Because someone's going to spit immediately, just by nature. Yeah, it, you don't even know you do it. Yeah. You know, you just spit. Oh. Um, so that'll be interesting. Is it a penalty if you spit, or is it going to be like somebody saying, hey, try I think they spit. can fine you. No. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine you. I don't understand why it would be a financial thing. I think it's a bacteria in the air, they believe. I also know that if you hit a ground ball and more than two guys hit, touch the ball. So mm -hmm. you threw it. Mm -hmm. Third baseman catches it, throws it to the first baseman. Three guys touch it. Got to get a new ball. Uh uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be wild. Oh my God! This is gonna be like the un Harlem Globetrotters, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems like. It's gonna, be like. it's gonna be unbelievable. <laughs> and so, are you concerned about how? Um, and now, hold on. There's more rules though, too. I read one that there is because I didn't know about these. Mm -hmm. So, but there's one where if you guys, you guys aren't gonna bat anymore. Correct. So the pitchers will no longer bat. Yes, which is a good thing. Bad thing. It's all. It's all good and bad because I we like to hit, but we all suck. Okay. So there's like two, <laughs> <laughs> like there's two pitchers maybe that can actually really hit. And right. We don't have any of them. Right, no right. offense to Kirsch or any of those guys. None of our guys can hit. Okay. So, but now I got to face another actual hitter. I don't get to face oh. myself, which is kind of a freebie a lot of the time. So yeah. So a lot of those guys in because the American League they have, they have the DH already. So they have the the pitcher never bats. Right. So, so they have nine professional hitters. So they have a so American League pitchers, it's harder for them to get a no hitter. For sure. Wow. Hundred percent. Dang it. Not shit. easy, regardless. Right. Easier in the National League probably. Um Okay, so I'm just thinking about these rules. This is so insane, dude. I almost feel like now I'm at the rodeo and it's, it's almost like we're not playing baseball anymore. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we're just yeah. playing like wiffle ball, but <laughs> um Okay, so now also there's a rule uh, if you guys go to extra innings mm -hmm. that they're going to put someone on second base. Yeah, so that that they've been doing that in the minor leagues for a long time. Okay, kind of testing it out. It'll JT actually came out and said he won a home run derby. And that's JT settle. Snow, Justin Turner, okay. our third baseman, big okay. red beard guy. Okay, he said he wants a home run derby to break the break the Ooh. extra innings, which I love. I think it'd be hysterical at the yeah. end of the game. Everybody's all tired, <laughs> yeah, dirty. Yeah. We're just trying to hit homers. <laughs> Um, and that's what the extra innings are, really are, because everybody wants to hit the walk off. So everyone just tries to hit home runs all the time in extra oh, innings really? anyway. So um, they've done this rule with the guy in second forever in the minor leagues, trying to figure it out. And now we're going to give it a go in the big leagues, I Dang. guess. But it'll be interesting. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, like what are your thoughts on it? I luckily have never like had to start an inning that I didn't let somebody on base, and they just stuck somebody out there. But um, there'll be pressure right out the gate because that guy's already there yeah and then there's like a million different strategies you know you can bunt or whatever to try and get him to third oh, so he yeah. can score easier and it might be cool it might be a way for a pitcher finally to get back in the batter's box though because pitchers are pretty pretty good bunters typically and do but but you all but even if your team doesn't get to bat first you still get the bottom of that inning right yeah okay. yeah 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 yeah, because that almost seems like, man, you could easily get the – yeah, maybe it'll make it a little more exciting. It might because sometimes these games just go on forever. I mean, yeah. We had that World Series game two years ago that went 17 innings, and I, I threw the first seven of it. I was at the ballpark longer not playing than I was, and I threw the ball really good. It was just – took forever. We played – shit, I got home at like 3 in the morning that Damn. day. And when the game start, like – so whenever it gets into <laughs> late innings, guys are just trying to hit that walk-off? Yeah, why? You know, because I, it's just a beautiful thing to see on this sports. Yeah, kind of I think thing. so. That's so great. <laughs> it's it's very funny how it happens in the in the in the extra innings. Like everyone either punches out or hits hits the homer. You know. Yeah. But sometimes that's why they go so long. Oh, I'd hit that homer. <laughs> Have to. So you can't go over to the dugout for anything. What if you tell the buddy something? Can you run over there and tell him something if he's on the other team? I, you know, I don't know if they're gonna let us have phones, walkie talkies. We got them. But even before that, like last, like say last season, you wanted to tell a buddy something. Oh yeah, we just sit there and bullshit the whole time. But in the other dugout, I mean. No, you can't. Nothing. Even if it's your buddy. No, you can't. And you know, there's certain times where it's okay to like go say what's up, and then mm -hmm. there's certain times that it's not. Um, so like in batting practice and stuff, sometimes we'll linger out there and talk to the other team, but you know, after a certain point, there's, there's nothing. we got a question right here from a young fella right here. And this might be Crone Gracie right here, this guy. <laughs> Hola tío, Colin Walker. Mm -hmm. This is your boy Luis from Puerto Rico, and I have a quick question for Walker. How do you feel about the whole sign stealing scandal that's been going on? And do you think that is, uh... It is going to affect in any way or shape the way that you guys play baseball this season, or is it going to be the same? Thank you for answering. Ganga, ganga. Gang, gang. <laughs> that guy's from Puerto Rico, man. <laughs> Feliz, so the science, papa. The science healing stuff. You, do you know much about this or no? Uh, I know that Houston got in trouble, right? Yes. Yeah. So what's interesting is they were doing all this shit live. So 
they know what was coming before it even came. Right. And that's unfair. Right. Which we're all against that. A lot of got you know, we do scouting and things like that, that you can push a limit and we all kind of know what that limit is and, and they were past it. So, um, you know, and then the Red Sox got banged. They weren't doing anything near what, what Houston was doing. So. so Houston was really what they were, they were knowing what the signs were. Mm-hmm. And then communi- finding ways to communicate it. Yeah, they were hitting on the wall. Was that stuff real, or do you think a lot of that's been exaggerated? No, I mean the videos seem to seem to really say that that was what was going on. I wasn't on the team really at that point. I'd been in the big leagues, but I didn't make the place or postseason roster, so I wasn't there. But um, from everything I'd heard, I think it was it was pretty legit that they were they were doing something. And so, say if something like that is going on, who knows about it on the team? Would everybody know, or would just yeah? Um, that kind of stuff's obviously going to be relayed to the pitchers and catchers more than anybody because they're doing the signs. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone's going to know I, that stuff. Kind of travels like wildfire, I guess. Um, Didn't they say yeah. possibly wearing buzzers too? Even yeah, that was the rumor. Um, I don't think that one was ever proven, but. You know, I think when you do one thing, if one thing you get caught for one thing, everybody can say you could do a million Whatever. different things. And it's kind of hard not to not to at least think it could happen. But yeah, because once you start also taking advantage of the rules or bending them, and you know, mm-hmm. once you get one way to do it, it's easy to be like, oh, I can also probably do right. this way. Right. And Jose Altuve, after he hit that walk off and they like they all rushed him at the mound at the time, I was like, oh, that was adorable because he's like, don't rip my shirt. My wife will be mad at me. But right. it seemed like after it was because they would uncover his buzzer. Right. Oh, conspiracy theories are great. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it seemed pretty lot yeah. plausible. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, we weren't in the <laughs> locker room or in their locker room and knew what was going on. But but if something like that was going on on a team, right? Yep. Say it's going on even on your, it was going on and just mm-hmm. this is hypothetical on a team that you're on. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't, so would somebody on the team what is there a code in there where it's like this is how we do it is just this is our uh, how we do it this year do you think somebody would raise their hand or if that person raised their hand you'd be like dude chill the fuck out yeah man. there's is- some sort of there's some sort of like clubhouse security i guess where everything kind of st- a lot of stuff stays in there and and shouldn't go anywhere right. so like if somebody in your old t- own team told told on you about it like there'd be problems i think um but yeah, I think if it's helping you win, I think everyone's going to know on the team and everyone's going to be involved personally. That would be my my guess. Huh. It's an interesting it's an interesting deal. Um do you do pitchers get are you when you go out there to play? Mm-hmm. Um and last year you had your first All-Star season, right? Mm-hmm. Congrats, man. Thank you. Um when you go out there to play, are you playing okay i'm gonna beat this other pitcher i'm gonna beat this team like what is the pitcher's kind of motivation or maybe Um, not even motivation but who is he who are you against yeah i think i think it's the other team is the big thing but when you face guys that you've like grown up watching there's a little bit of like oh shit like i'm facing max scherzer today yeah and i think for me it was always like oh i get to hit against him and just see what this is all about that's gone but no, I think most of the time it's it's the other team and, and the pitcher's kind of secondary unless it's like certain guys. Okay, so so when you're pitching then if it's a certain pitcher up there, mm-hmm. then you might feel like, oh, this is kind of exciting. Right. Like for you it'd be I think like for you it'd be like, oh, I'm getting more views on this podcast. Right. But if we had the same guest who's did more, it would be more important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your mom's house would win probably. <laughs> uh but yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Okay. And if a pitcher gets up there, so it's kind of cool. Say if there's a if there's a great pitcher, mm-hmm. it's kind of cool for you to be able to bat because you get to bat against him. Yeah, because you've watched it on ESPN your whole life, right? Yeah. So you're like, oh, like why can't these guys hit this? And then he throws you that one pitch, and you're like, oh, now I get to get why nobody can hit this <laughs> shit. Scherzer was like that for me. Really? Oh yeah. What was it about his? Well, he threw me a fastball, and the first one looked wasn't super hard. And then a couple more pitches, he threw me another fast one. I didn't even see it. It was so firm. I guess he just kind of like laid off one and then threw one hard. And I was like, oh, my God. Damn. I think I was like laughing, walking off. I was like, I have no chance. (laughs) Yeah, it seems. Here we got a kid right here that has a question. The Dole shirt. Yeah, baby Bob Dole. Yo, what up, Theo? What up, Walker? Uh, I just had a quick question for Walker. Um, when I'm watching baseball, there's a couple guys I kind of key in on wanting to watch. Uh, guys like yourself, Jack Flaherty, uh, Max Scherzer. 
um, guys that are just bulldogs on the mound. I was wondering if Walker had any guys that he likes to watch, um, whether it's starting pitchers or position players, um, but guys that he just enjoys watching them uh, do their thing out there on the ball field. Anyway, um, hope you guys are having a good day. And Theo, gang, gang. Thanks, bro. Nice guy. Where did that come from? First gang, time? gang? Yeah. I don't know, really. It was before my time here. <laughs> with <Yeah>. you. <laughs> just been rolling, huh? Yeah, I don't really know, man, but it's just people like it. It's and now it's just become the sign-off on the end. <laughs> we got to um, get Walker some slides. <clears throat> yeah, we got to get you some slides, man. I'll rock those. Awesome, I'll dude. rock. Hey, our trainers get so mad because I just watch Instagram videos all the time yeah. while they're working on my arm, and they just hear all these Theo Fong <laughs> <Ridiculous>. videos. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, man, Walker's, like, not, Walker's not going to have a good year. Yeah. I, one of my first days back, like a couple of days ago, I was watching shit, and they're just like, oh, Bueller's back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the first time you said you heard about me, I was, I was the we were talking about Bryce Harper yeah. when he won all that yeah, cocaine money. Yeah, the yeah. 330 oh, million. Man, dude, I'd have been combing my hair with cocaine, bro, if I'd have had that my, kind of money. What's the one I should... So we always get these new interns. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we'll get to your question. Okay. <laughs> we always get these new interns, and I show them. There's one you talk about eating pineapple and somebody's oh, grandmother yeah. or something. <laughs> That's like the first thing I always show these interns. I'm like, okay. check this out. This is hysterical. And they're like, what the? <laughs> like, damn. Like, yeah, welcome. <laughs> the caption yeah. is, te amo them chunks. <laughs> yeah, te amo them chunks, baby. The, they're like, man, I gotta, I'm going to go get a job with the Marlins after this. This is getting really shoddy over it's here. It's so funny. Um, uh, but no, one of the guys he mentioned, Jack Flaherty, is a buddy of mine, and we've pitched against each other twice, and in, back in the minor leagues too. So he's probably one of my favorite guys to watch now. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's from out here somewhere. I think he went to Harvard Westlake. Mm, that's a fancy school. Oh yeah, yeah. They got three guys in the big leagues now that were all high school teammates. Which oh, I think OJ Simpson wild. teaches PE. They have, <laughs> Harvard Westlake is stacked, bro. They have a really stacked squad. They're unbelievable. Um, so. Wow, that's so interesting. So is it easier as a pitcher when you get up there to bat against a pitcher? It would seem like, oh, well, you know what they're doing. Yeah, you know, I, I think my career batting average is under 100. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think I have any any way to say any of it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm none of it, huh? Kind of terrible, but, you know, it <laughs> was part of the game, I guess. It's, do it you feel sucks. sad even walking up there sometimes with the bat? Like, is it? Certain guys, you absolutely do. Oh, oh dang, bro. <laughs> Because as a viewer, you're like, oh, man, this seems real well, sad. Like, why would they do this? It's almost like when they shoot Bambi in that yeah, movie. Yeah, it's tough. Bambi. <laughs> kind of feel like a gladiator, but you're like the guy without a sword. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> oh, let's see what this guy with the notebook <laughs> is going to do over here. Uh, Damn, and you can't act like you don't have a chance. No, so a real hitter walks up, and they're like, all right, I'm trying to hit this ball hard. I want to try and sit on it. I just walk up there and try and see as many pitches as I can. <laughs> Like, my goal is to foul balls off most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Because that counts almost for you guys. Well, yeah, hell yeah. If you see six pitches, you've done like a really good thing. Wow. Oh, yeah. Instead of just three right down the middle. <laughs> or Galahad over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you, you can't tell, though, when a pitch leaves a pitcher. It's the same. Uh, you Are you then not a pitcher once you're batting? I mean, I know that yeah. technically you're still a pitcher and you're batting, but. Do you have any ins – is there any insight as to what's going to happen each Yeah, time? I was actually a really bad hitter in high school because I would, like, give these other guys credit for – like I'd be like, all right, if that was me pitching, I'm, like, looking for this pitch, like, I would do this, and they would never do oh, it. Oh, almost like uh, blackjack. Yeah, you think, like, oh, or poker or whatever. Like, yeah. if I had this hand, I'd do th – That's And better. they were terrible. Wow. You know, they're, <laughs> you're like – And so I'd be like, oh, I'd throw a slider right here, and they'd just throw me a fastball yeah. right down the middle. I'd miss it. <laughs> But it was it was just because they were a bad pitcher. Yeah, and I, I was overthinking it. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> Every funny. Time. Dang, dude, that's so crazy, man. It seems like it is. Man, I remember the first time I ever got up to bat, man. They had this, uh, and I was horrible at it. I mean, I remember one time they put us out there. I remember eating psychedelic mushrooms out mm. in the outfield. <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it was way. Dude, we had right and double right on our team, dude, and mm. I always had to play double right. Yeah, back, yeah, back right. Oh, dude, and one time I ended up working at the snowball stand for two innings, dude. <laughs> two whole innings. I, mean, I was like, man, but the coach said it still counted, you know? Right, well, he had to play two innings, right? Or yeah, that was the rule. Yep. Oh, that was the saddest. Oh, it was the worst. Get in there. All right. The worst. And then I had an appendectomy in my appendix burst when I was a kid, lapping the bases. Really? Between two bases, so I hit the ground, man, you know? They, I they couldn't, tagged you out or no? Uh, or they give you the base? 
I don't know what happened. The coach was furious. He's like, run. He called yeah. me an mf for This is back when you could still call kids an mf yeah. yeah. And he's like, run, mf for run. And I, and I was just like squealing. Just, he's like, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I couldn't. I didn't know what was going on. And he came and dragged me by both my arms from third to home, dude. Mm. And we got the run, but it was like, dude, who gave a shit? Our team was horrible. We're playing at the American Legion. Yeah, it just meant you didn't get slaughter rolled or something. <laughs> yeah. Everybody there's a Vietnam veteran, dude, getting sunburned, waiting for their check. It was just rocky. Um so any other any other expectations you have going into the season? Does it feel like going into a regular season? Like Absolutely not. It can't it can't. We've been sitting at home for three months. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Well, I hope we get all our games in. That'd be the biggest thing in the playoffs and all that. But with this, all the new COVIDs around, I got you know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And they are planning on traveling. That's yeah. So what they did normally, we tr we play every national league team. So we go to the East Coast back and forth all the time, which sucks because we get screwed on the time stuff. But we're only playing. I think we're only playing like the the NL West, so our division, and the AL West. So we're kind of staying out here, which will be nice travel-wise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of those six hours flight, six hour flights to Washington and shit like that. But. So that so they're making it easy that way. There'll be nobody in the stands. Correct. What do you think, like, is that going to – is everybody still going to care about the game as much? It takes some of the ego out of it almost. Yeah, it takes some of the energy out of it for sure. You know, like, I think a lot of teams are talking about buying crowd noise or pumping crowd noise in there, so it feels a little bit – Oh yeah, more like it. I saw in Korea they're using sex dolls Putting in the them stands. Out there? Yeah, oh that'd be kind of cool. Um, some teams I heard are you can pay fifty bucks and get a cardboard cut out of yourself put in the stadium. Wow, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. So you look up and there's all these <laughs> yeah, cardboard. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's but, not a bad idea. No, but they're doing some they're doing some wacky stuff, especially over there in in Korea. Wow. Yes, those were sex dolls cheering on a South Korean soccer team. Yeah, I think they got in trouble for that. Why? Some of those chicks are hot. <laughs> and they're wearing masks. <laughs> I know, dang. It's an interesting deal. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and they're six feet apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's an interesting one. Wow. Some on social media. Go back up to the top if you don't mind, Nick. Um, over the weekend, mannequins were placed in the stands for a match against Guangzhou FC. Some on social media noted the telltale signs. Business logos for sex toy marketers. <laughs> We've tried to add some fun, he says. Fun in the no spectator match. <laughs> I like it kind of. I love the idea of having somebody be able to send a picture in or like get oh, themselves yeah. put in the stands like for a certain, like as a, you could do that as a gift to somebody. Yeah. You know, like you're there. Yeah, happy birthday with three in Tondra Stadium. <laughs> yeah. And maybe somebody that doesn't want to be there, it's like grandma, you know? Can you imagine open that for Christmas and it just says, you have a cardboard cutout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never get to see it. Yeah. You don't get to watch a game, but you might – catch a glimpse on tv it's like almost yourself. like getting one of those stars it's like somebody buys yeah. you a star you're like oh thanks asshole. or adopting some sea otter yeah yeah dude now i have to go outdoors at night i live in a dangerous neighborhood <laughs> yeah, we, should send, we should send michael landon oh yeah we should <laughs> send michael landon that's a great idea that's pretty funny um today's episode is brought to you by better help you know it's not anything new to know that people need help if you see somebody and you, and they and they're trying to do something they can't do it then they need help. And that's what BetterHelp does, but it does it for the inside of your body, inside of your head and your brain. BetterHelp will assess your mental health needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. I've used BetterHelp. I even pulled over on the side of the road one time and used them. However, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in anytime and send a message to your counselor. There's also different ways you can have a counselor. You can do it over text. You can do it on the phone. You can do it over FaceTime. You could do it on your laptop. But it just makes it a different way where if you don't want to go down to the, the, the place that's in your town or in your neighborhood, Maybe your friend's wife is the counselor or something. You don't want to do that. But you want to talk to somebody. You got things you want to say. This is a way to do it. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And that's true. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Theo. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash T-H-E-O. And you will get 10% off your first month. That's right. Join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. 
That's BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. Uh, thank you for supporting yourself and for supporting the podcast. Do you have car insurance? Well, if you don't, then you're part of the problem. But if you do, well, either way, just know that it's been reported that Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over $21 billion. But searching for a better deal can take hours and typically results in a barrage of unwanted spam calls. Yep, you, you go to a site, next thing you know, they call and their kids are calling. You know, you got Larry Insurance or, you know, Larissa Insurance. They hitting you up. But things have changed now thanks to thezebra.com. Thezebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site because it's the only place you can compare quotes side by side from over 100 providers and choose the best for you in 90 seconds or less. Plus, they will never sell your information to the spammers. Just answer a few questions on a simple, fast form, and they find you the best rates and coverage in your state. TechCrunch calls the Zebra Kayak for auto insurance. The best part? It's completely free. You can save up to $670 a year using thezebra.com. And how much can you save on car insurance and home insurance? Well, go today and start saving at thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. That's thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O, spelled T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash T-H-E-O. I uh, am using Progressive, and I know that I'm using, I'm paying too much, so I'm going to check it out and see what I can do. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast. So yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else that would be different out there. So there'll be no snacks because nobody's buying them. All that's yep. going to be down. Yep. It's just going to be solely to make sure that they have a season, probably to keep the flagship of the whole business going. Correct. Which is pretty important. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I think one of the big things has been the owners come out and saying that we're not going to make, we're not making any money. We're going to lose money, but everybody's franchises keep going up. Right. So. These owners, yeah, they're not bringing in cash, right? But they can sell this thing for X amount more every year that they keep it. So, um, you know, we're excited to get back out there and play, obviously. And, and you know, at least people can watch us at home, which will be fine. Now, are you, in the end, were you excited? Like, yes, we're going to get to play. We're going to get to do, we're going to get to do something. Yeah, all of us, I think, are. There's a few guys that have opted out of it, which I think, you know, if you have family and stuff, I think that's a that's a decision that you have to really, like, stare down. Um but I'm ready to go. I'm excited. They have a uh, a Latino friend of mine named Rudy, and he's oh, uh, he's not just Latino; he's specifically Mexican, and mm-hmm. he uh, works at this. He's like the manager at this cafe that I go to all the time in mm-hmm. neighborhood, and he loves you. And he's like, "Oh, that guy, <laughs> that guy, loco." That's what he always says. Yeah, I, you know, I have my moments. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's really funny. Every time I go in there, he doesn't even say your name anymore. He's just like, oh, that guy, local. Yeah, I had a couple. Uh, and he talks my, a little bit Asian. Unfortunately, <laughs> my accents are not good. My, my rookie are two, two live TV F-bombs. We've tried to try to curtail those a yeah. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very family friendly, but. But do you think that chip, where does that chip on your shoulder come from, man? Because you definitely, like, you have an intensity about you that I think. Like when I first met you, I was like, "Wow!" Just because of your size, and I mean, you're you know you're right. bigger than me than I am. But and this was the same way when I met Drew Brees. I was like, "Wow!" I this is not exactly who I expected. Maybe right. if I thought these days of a major league pitcher. Right. Yeah, I think uh, as I said earlier, Napoleon complex is for sure part of it. But I think the other thing was being small. I played a little football. I was always too scared. I think when I played baseball, I was like, "Oh, I'm the smallest one, but I'm not. I don't have to be scared of this. Nobody's right. going to hurt me." You right. know. And so I think you take that little fear and, and turn it somewhere else so you can kind of function, I guess. And as the stakes get higher, I think it just amplifies it for me at least where I get a little more, you know. A little more jazzed juiced up. Juiced up, yeah. Um, when you're pitching, do you – is there a pitch? Like does the catcher – who gets to pick what pitch throw you throw, the catcher or you? Um, so the catcher gives – the way they explain it, catcher gives you a suggestion mm-hmm. and you agree to that suggestion 95% of the time. We have a whole big meeting that's like 30, 30 minutes long going over every hitter and mm-hmm. and what we want to do before the game. So we kind of know, like at least out there, I don't have to think as much. I told them what I think. Now they kind of just remind me and then I throw that pitch. Okay. Um, but my rookie year, we had a really veteran catcher. 
So couldn't really shake him off. You can't really say no to those Oh, really? Guys. Yeah, certain guys. So if sure. you had Mike Piazza or something sitting out there, you'd probably go along with what he says. Yeah. Wow. Because he's seen these batters so many times. Right, and you and knows – the assumption is that he's been there longer, so he knows what you're doing better than you do, you know? Now, if you throw a pitch that they choose, then it's also kind of nice for you because then if it gets rocked, you have somebody to blame it on. Right, right, right. You know, it's that's an itch. The worst possible scenario is you shake the guy off three times and throw it, and then he hits a homer because oh. then the catcher just says, listen, dumbass, <laughs> I told you, you know? Yeah. Um, that's actually exactly what they will say. Yeah. Those <laughs> <laughs> So that so that relationship between catcher pitcher and catcher is pretty it's pretty severe. It's huge, huh? yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really super trusting. You know, you, you have to be, or else you're gonna freak yourself out the whole time. And do you have? Does every pitcher have every same pitch as everybody else? Do some Mm-mm. pitchers have? No, everybody's got different different stuff, and even we all call certain things the same thing, and they act completely different. It's just okay. kind of the way you are. You know what I mean? It's like how you run or how you talk. It just Oh, I throw a slider and mine moves like this and there's moves like this and like uh like your boy Clevenger. Yeah. He and I throw very similar stuff. When he throws a change up, I don't. His stuff is bigger, mine's kinda of harder. It's just they're all different little variations. He's a little more flashier too. Yeah, that guy's you know? tatted up. Oh, dude, tatted he's wild. Up. Yeah. Oh, he tried to sell me a unicorn egg one time. Yeah, you know that what I'm saying? He's got. Me. Yeah, that's not surprising, <laughs> man. He definitely, dude. He pulled a, a seashell out of his hair one time, and I listened to it, bro, and it told yeah. me the future, the whole story. But then he made me give it back to him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. So he's, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, we saw him. We were in Phoenix eating breakfast or lunch or something. And I saw him. His shorts were about halfway down his thigh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he had, oh, he's sexy, bro. He'll he show had, those legs off. He had tie-dye tank top on. All his boys dressed yeah. exactly the same. I've never met the guy. <laughs> and I walked to say, oh, that's Mike Clevenger. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that it makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> I think he has a flower on his glove, which oh, he's is one, He's one yeah. of a kind, dude. He yeah. told me he was trying to uh, – he told me his glove was vegan, and I was like, that's insane, yep. man. It's made of leather, too. <laughs> yeah, that's ironic <laughs> and insane. Um, but, yeah, man, he's one of a kind, man. Yeah. Um, how much does some of the pitchers I notice, like even Mike's one of the guys who their leg movements will be different. Mm-hmm. How much are you allowed to do there before it's like considered a type of trickery or something? Ooh. Um, if there's nobody on, nobody on base, mm-hmm. you can basically do whatever you want. Wow. Basically. There's some rules. Have you heard of a balk? Yeah, a balk is So when that's you... when you're creating deception in an illegal fashion. Okay. That's what a balk is. Okay. So Is that shady to do if you balk? It just sucks. They get a free base. Okay. So, so if you got a man on, if you got a man on third and Bach, they score. They don't have to touch it. They don't have to touch the ball. Nothing. They just walk home. Wow. So that's if you kind of oh, everybody gets a free base if you oh, balk, yeah. no matter yeah. where they are. Oh yeah. Oh wow. It sucks. Have you ever lost a game on a balk before? No, my high school lost. <laughs> I was in eighth grade going to watch our varsity team. I was like so excited they lost on a walk off balk. Oh. It was tough to watch. You know, seniors last game. <laughs> Damn, <that's laughs> just, it, yeah. The guy fucks up one time and game's over. Season's so, over. So what constitutes a balk? Like, what do you have to do when you're on the mound? There's a few things. So when you, you get your sign and you come, you have to stop. So your body has to fully stop before you pitch. So okay. when you're young, you just kind of get it and throw it. Now you have to get it, pause, and then throw. That's probably the most common one. Mm-hmm. Um. There's some certain pickoff moves. You have to, like, disengage the rubber, all these kind of boring rules. But okay. you just learn the normal way. And then, like, you balk a lot when you're young because right. you don't know what you can and can't do. Okay. Yeah, probably once you get called for it, then you start to really, you're like, yeah. okay, I yeah. got a malfunction here. The weirdest one I've seen a guy just drop the ball on the mat. If you drop the ball while uh-huh. you're touching the rubber, it's a balk. Oh, wow. It's just on, it was just an accident. Yeah. I've seen a guy bringing it to his, you know, bringing it down, and he hit his leg, dropped it, balk. Guy scores. <laughs> Would you ever, how much pride is in it where, say, if you're not doing well out there, you're just having a game where it's not your, going mm-hmm. your way, would you take yourself out of the game ever? Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. So there is a point in every game where it's all about preservation of the bullpen because the bullpen's super, super important. Mm-hmm. If you're getting crushed, you just try and like survive as long as you can. Oh, because you want them to save the bullpen for extra, another games. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So guys don't have to cover you. You know what I mean? You want to. So I got killed in Atlanta. My first playoff start. First inning goes great. Second inning, I walk the pitcher to oh. force a run in, which is as embarrassing as it gets. Not even. I didn't even throw a pitch close. My first playoff game, we're down one nothing. I'm like, all right, throw three straight balls. I get this on Instagram. People send it to me just for fun all the time. The fourth one. It was a ball. Umpire calls it a strike. 
Next pitch, Acuna hits a grand slam. We're down five nothing. Oh. And at that point, I ended up throwing three more innings, gave up no more runs, but we were going to lose probably. Mm-hmm. But those three innings, safe three innings that one of our other guys didn't have to throw. So it also gives you a little bit of redemption then. Yeah, a little bit of like, listen, I I screwed this one up pretty good, but at least I kind of... I'm doing my best to help us out a little. Right. Mm. It'd be like if you bombed, mm-hmm. if you went out and bombed, which I'm sure happens, mm-hmm. at least you finish your 10 minutes. Right. Instead of, oh shit, at minute two, this is going really poorly. So now my backup, now the guy after me has to do my eight minutes as well as his right. 10. Oh. Yeah, so you want to try and at least just get there, even if it sucks for you. Yeah. Damn. Is it real? Inve- like, is the feeling when you're out there like, like is it once it, if it starts going bad like say in that game okay mm-hmm. so it starts going it started off bad but you were able to get it back on track mm-hmm. like um does it feel like you lose your confidence like what does it feel like it just feels like everyone in the world is staring at you and oh. telling you that you suck you know and even though you don't and you yeah. know you don't it, you know you go the you go home after that game you obviously don't get food because there's too many people that could see you yeah right so you get room yeah, service, yeah, yeah. and whoever brings the room service, if they'll smile, and you think they're just laughing at you. Uh, they're not. They're just being nice. They just want that yeah. $5 tip. They're just dropping off a salad, man. Right. <laughs> You're like, oh, that guy, fucking, he must, be a, uh, he must be a Cardinals fan. Yeah, you also sometimes will change your whole diet for about 12 hours after you get beat like that. You just like you eat nothing but salad. Oh, just something you start to change just it drinking up. drinking water bottles. Yeah, because you think I might have, I fucked something up along the way that, that led me to get killed. So, so there's almost like that taboo element. Like you're like, how do I, because you've been doing well, how do I solve this? Something's going off the Yeah, rail. what have I done? Oh, yeah. wow. Karmic, a lot of karma elements in, in baseball, the whole superstition and all that stuff. Now, what's harder then? So say you're having a tough game. You, you know, you're having a tough game and, you know, you feel everybody staring at you. Is it better when you're in that dugout then when the team's batting at least? Is there some like respite or is that hellish too? Because it's like That's it's- when your head's going nuts. When you're out there, it's kind of like, all right, fastball, we'll try this one again. It's already sucked, but we'll give it a shot. When yeah. you're sitting in the dugout and you're just like looking around – Everybody's we're down six to nothing. Everybody's yeah. sad, and you're, you're always like, by yourself too. When the camera shows the pitcher who's losing, he's always by himself over yeah, there, and, and he's pissed. And off. you did this. This oh. is my fault. Damn, that's heavy, man. It sucks. Yeah. Um. So you have a a contract now, mm-hmm. and then what happens? So how long does a, a rookie contract? Is there a year amount yeah, of years? Yeah. So to you become a free agent after six full service. Thanks for years. all this information, man. It's just you know stuff I'm just well, curious about. Dude, I, I think it's interesting because. I think people probably know the least about baseball contracts of any of them. Like when somebody Zion Williamson gets drafted, yeah, everyone knows how long he has to be a Pelican and what he's going to make and his shoot. Nobody knows shit about us. Yeah, we have to play six full seasons in the big leagues, so 172 days is a full season. So if you don't whatever six times 172 is, you have to have that many days in the big leagues mm-hmm. to be a free agent. After three years, you get arbitration. Okay. So like Clevenger's in arbitration. I'm next year will be in arbitration. So I'm on my last year, my three years. Okay. So once you get into arbitration, then what? What does that mean? Then it's you versus the team and an arbitrator and your agent. Oh, to you, figure out a new deal. And you basically argue what you're worth. So the team will sit there and tell you to your face how bad you suck. Right. And you'll tell them how great you are. Right. And then the guy in the middle will tell you, here's where we're at. Okay. Huh, interesting. So after this next year, you'll be able to go in arbitration. Yeah. So this is a big season for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, in some ways, that third season is a big season for guys because yeah. they want to do well that season. <clears throat> yeah, you have to. It's right. called a They call it a platform year. So this is like the worst season you could get hurt. That's what happened to Corey Seager. He got hurt in its third year. He probably made half of what he would have if he would have played healthy. Oh. And But also it's interesting because this season counts as a season, right? This upcoming mm-hmm. one. So I wonder if they'll really – put as much value it's almost like well they still just go off of last year well it's a double-edged sword right because if you do great they can say well, you wouldn't have sustained that and uh, if you do terrible they can say you were terrible right but our argument's like well i wouldn't have sustained the shitty part either you know but so in the end it's going to be the same you're going to say I they're going to so. say one thing and you're going to say yeah that. everything i mean everything counts but yeah it's just business we'll see. it has to be um what about some of these guys so you go up against a guy uh like, are there pitchers where you're like, okay, I'm excited about this duel today? Like, do you feel mm-hmm. like it's it, this is going to be a real pitcher's game? Do you feel – well, you don't ever feel like any of them are going to be hitter's games because you don't want that team to be hitting. Yeah, can't. We, we, I just want us to hit. Right. I don't want them to at all. Jack Flaherty and I have had two good 
we both threw really well against each other. We just got lucky and, and scored a couple runs. So um, Scherzer and I had a couple good games. I pitched against Garrett Cole, which was cool. Um, the playoffs really get like that. That's when it. That's when it really is like when the matchups are really like okay. Well, yeah, because it's all over social media, and it's like we're the only 100% starter, right? Like the manager could flip the lineup if they felt like it, right? But the media knows it's Bueller versus Strasburg tomorrow, and that's everywhere. So you're yeah. like, oh, that's fucking, I gotta, this I gotta beat it. him. Yeah, that's um, when it gets a little more like that. I think. Here's a question right here from someone. Uh, my question for Walker is, who's the hardest hitter you've had to face so far? See, I like this. Black Charlie Blackman is the guy that has the best numbers off me in my career. Got hair like yours. Really? I don't know if you want to pull up a picture of yeah, him. Yeah, pull up a picture of little Chucky Blackman right there, dude. This guy's a good player, though. I'll fucking hit off his ass. Plays out in Denver. There you go. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. Look at that. He reminds me of Brian Wilson a little bit. Remember yep. Brian Wilson? Oh, yeah. See, I think if you threw a little beard, we could get a... Or Mike Chiesa, MMA fighter. Who's that? Michael Chiesa. Huh. Um, there was, he looks like that UFC fighter that won this past week, too. The big um, heavyweight. He won early. Oh, yeah, Tanner Boser. Yeah, the Canadian dude. Oh, I didn't see that fight. I've really gotten into that stuff since uh, since this quarantine. It's been like the only thing on. What's what I was saying about, that's what I was thinking about you guys the other day when I was thinking about baseball. I was like, man, if you guys get... Just coming back and being there for people right now is going to be huge because people want to watch right. anything. Yeah, They want to watch some competition. I mean, you can't even get – there's no fresh television shows because no. everything – they're putting on shitty television shows they weren't even going to pick up. Right, because you know? they have to. Yeah, I mean, they have like dodgeball. They have like <laughs> – you know, it's getting real bad. Rumors. It's just people just sharing rumors as quick as they can. <laughs> I mean, it's getting really, really limited out there. They're like a cross between cops and cheaters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Cheaters used to be good. Remember oh, that show? Fuck. I think I, I think that was a little before my time, to be honest with you. Yeah, it might have been, man. I like it. I remember watching it when I was like twelve and being like, "This is so old." <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, the best Cheaters was when the guy busts somebody on a boat and the guy stabs him oh. on the boat. And just <laughs> jump out of it. Just tough to watch. <laughs> dude, I met that guy at a wine function out here in LA. Dude, he was like, "Yeah, man, that was a tough episode." <laughs> Which guy? The guy who stabbed him or the host? The guy who got stabbed, yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> That's one weird thing about LA, man. You'll... That was a tough episode. Dude, I'm, I'm, I met, uh, yeah, let me see if the, if we can see that stabbing. Oh, God. Nope. Yeah, I'm back up off my boat, you know what I'm saying? Uh, His quality looks like my like, you know sixth birthday home. <laughs> 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 no! Please, stop! Stop! They launched him off the <laughs> boat? He's a little, he seemed like a little bitch too, Joey Decker, so I think he kind of went off. Yeah. Put your hands on your back. Put it back easy. Don't see me anymore. Uh, I would hate this on a boat. Yeah, I'm alright. We got arrested at sea too, huh? Yeah. yeah that's a, by not even police, that's a weird thing. What, um, now there's off season stuff you can't do, right? There's, or, or is it, is yeah. it limited for you or not? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of the obvious stuff, skiing, stuff like that, we can't do. Um, and you can't do it at all. Well, you can, but if you break your collarbone, your contract's gone. Right. You know, so, so it's I love, really risky. I love to ski and stuff, but you can't do it. You'll ski later. Uh, yeah. There, some people have some weird stuff in their contract. I've heard guys aren't allowed, allowed to wear flip flops, you know, because they have bad ankles. Oh, damn. So the team will put that in that contract. Like, no, no, no flip flops for you. Um, but yeah, golf is even supposed to not be allowed. Any. Tubing, skiing, snowboarding, none of that shit. So, do you feel limited ever by your contract, or no? You just kind of know that those are the rules of the game of the the in the business I'm in. Yeah, I mean, you sign it. You can't not sign the contract, right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to go ski, but you just can't do it. Yeah. Um, do you think you guys will have the opportunity to bring in new fans with the games go with the game starting up? Um, they said that at UFC. I, I was listening the other day. I think it was. It was on Chael Sonnen's podcast, but that they brought in 100,000 new fans. Uh, 100,000 people watched US, uh, right. UFC for the first time really? this past week of fights. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, I think they did a really good job actually being the first. You know what I mean? I think they right, probably, have the, probably have the most controllable environment, though, because you have the least amount of people in a locker room, probably. Yeah. So I think they did a good job of, like, taking advantage of it. Um, I think more so our fans are just, like, going to be happy that we're back, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully everybody watches and 
you know, we're getting back before the NBA, so it's good. maybe get some of those fans a little bit waiting for for them to come back. But do um do you think so? You know what will be interesting is they should have more focus and information maybe about you guys, the players, because yeah. they're not going to be focusing on the stand. You know, there won't be anything really to look at in the stands. Right. So yeah, they're no going to have, yeah. yeah, they're probably having an extra 20 minutes a game to fill, you know, just of, just right. Yeah. I've seen some good time. fights in San Francisco, by the way, oh, right behind stands? home plate. Yeah. This woman just smoked this guy. It was oh. all, pretty cool stuff. Dude, I was, I'll tell you, this is, this is a, before you were a Dodger, I got, I was high on cocaine. This is <laughs> when I was using drugs and, I was high on cocaine at the Dodgers game, dude, and I sat up in the top, bro, mm, dude. The nosebleed's literally <laughs> up there. <laughs> yeah, dude. And the nosebleeds, I think, are also a gang that's up there as yeah, well. There's absolutely. literally a gang called the nosebleeds up there. And there was one dude, man, I was so sketched out. There was one guy the whole time. It's threatening to kill me, bro. I think he knows I'm high. And mm. he keeps saying, man, I'm going to fucking kill you, papa. <laughs> and then there's another guy, bro, who kept trying to sell me more drugs. Right, well, man, it was like the it was, angel and the devil. <laughs> yeah. But actually... And there might not even really been anybody there. I could have been at home, man. It seemed like sounded like two devils, you yeah, know. Yeah, but. double devils, man. <laughs> it could have been at a Raiders game, <laughs> but it, dude, I remember it being, so, bro. I was like, please, this. And then every time there was a foul ball or any time the ball hit the bat, I thought it was coming right at me. You have to. And yeah. I was in the third deck, bro. Yeah, that'll happen. I think. You low guys, altitude up there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys play at one of the biggest stadiums, don't you? Yeah, it's gigantic. That was the one thing I remember the most from my debut was like you never really know how it's gonna feel. You know, you run out there and you're all tired from running and adrenaline. You look up and this stadium seems like it goes on forever, and you just I, it's so weird to me how how big they built these things. But here we got a young fella right here, a Twins fan. Minnesota. Oh, what up, Theo? What up, Walker? This is Noah from North Dakota, um, Minnesota's neighbor. If you didn't uh, know, <laughs> we didn't. North Dakota was a state. Um, <laughs> just had a quick question regarding a specific MLB stadium. Uh, I know that you play the Rockies often. Um, being in the NL West, and you had 16 Ks on them last year at home. But does your approach change when you're going into Coors Field to pitch um, in Colorado due to that high altitude? Uh, you looking for more ground balls? You pitch around people more often. Uh, so let me know, uh, gang, gang. Um, good luck in your modified season. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, nice, nice, nice guy. A lot of nice people, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coors what Field, is that? Coors Field sucks. So the ball acts completely different. It flies a lot further when they hit it. So, um, yeah. You know, I think every time I pitch there, I just come up with some new thing in my head. Uh, that makes me think I can survive. and So it's almost more about survival there. So that's not the kind of place you think I can probably get a no-hitter out here. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, Hideo Nomo, who was big Asian pitcher for us yeah. back in the day, he threw a no-hitter there, though. Wow. Which I think is maybe the most impressive thing of all time. Um, but, yeah, the pitches just act different. I, you know, I almost feel bad for some of the pitchers that got drafted there because you're not really, like, playing on the same same game that we are because it's just and why is it what is it because the air is thinner so what right so the ball can't like it as the ball goes it'll move certain ways because it gets air and you're spinning it and it pulls it other ways there the air is thinner so it doesn't pull it the same way oh interesting so if there's less moisture in the air then there's less for the ball to grip on while it's in the air yep yeah so you can't do the same things that you normally do or you have to try and aim certain you know all season you throw one pitch the same way to the same area and it pretty much does what you think it's going to do in there it'll end up half moving half as much and right in the middle and they just kill you. Now, what about, um, how do you pitch? So say you want a guy to hit a ball, like a ground ball. Like how mm -hmm. do you, how do you pitch to him? Typically you're going to throw lower. Okay. Higher means ground balls or higher means fly balls. Lower means ground balls. Typically now, obviously the scouting and all that stuff and kind of the research that we do. So certain guys really can hit the ball low and whatever, but typically you're going to aim, aim lower. Yeah would be the big thing um do you guys is there a lot of like uh do you feel like there's good team unity as as much team unity as you've gone up through the ranks because did you play some at triple a for some yeah so you play in the minor leagues and that's like the toughest thing to actually have like a cohesive team because every week that team has two or three guys that they didn't the week before wow. and everyone's you got to be super selfish in the minor leagues you try and not act like it but 95 percent of your thoughts are about how good you're doing once you get to the big leagues, it's about winning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the big leagues is, is where you kind of come together more, but at the same time, you've got guys that are making crazy money and living a completely different life than you. And you're, if you're making 
the league minimum, some guys are making twenty five, thirty million dollars. You're just gonna live differently. You know what I mean? Oh and yeah. The other thing I think that's hard about LA is none of us live near each other. I think if you play in Cincinnati, you're gonna live in two or three little neighborhoods. Buildings, yeah, and, neighborhoods, yeah. And you can go have a barbecue on off days and stuff like that. And we try and do it, but for me to go to Kirsch's house from Marina last year, it was an hour and a half. Like yeah. so it's hard to do that kind of stuff, I think. But I think inside of our clubhouse, all of us are, are pretty close. Is there a sport that you guys compete in off outside of baseball? We play a lot of cards. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've kind of been swimming, you know, in, in some other waters yeah, in that. Because yeah. I'm playing against guys that are making real, real money. And, and not that, like, we don't make enough money, but comparatively. Right. <laughs> so you could just get bullied and, and lose all your money. But so Oh, so you guys would meet up and do some poker games or stuff like that? On the flights most of the time. Right. That's like the big pass the time on the flights thing is, is we play poker. Is it just poker? Do you all play rummy, gin, anything like that? Different um, things? We used to play a game called 357, which is per my personal favorite. And mm -hmm. what screwed me is I won a lot of money playing that game. Cause you, <laughs> and so then I had to stay in the poker games or else I was like the dickhead that won the money and then bounced. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's so the then, fucking thing about poker. You got to stay in until you lose it. <laughs> right. So we're playing this other game. And then this was my rookie year. We got some new guys on the team at the trade deadline. They're like, no, 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 no. We're, we're playing poker. I was like, F all right. <laughs> and I just lost every oh, time. <laughs> but I'd rather lose it than, than be the guy that ran away, I think. But yeah. still not fun. What were some other things go going up in the going into those minor leagues and being in that vibe where it's uh like are there things that you miss <clears throat> about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean sharing you, you used to share like a two bedroom apartment with four guys. You know what right. I mean? Which is like it sucks. It's not perfect, but it's kind of fun at, at times, I right. think. Um, you know, everybody rolls to the field together, goes home, kind of. Yeah, it's fun around. to have people to climb around with. Yeah, just mess around with after games, especially because you're, first off, in the minor leagues, you're not making no money. You're making $1,200 a month. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. So you're making, you know, you're talking taxes, you're getting like 400 bucks maybe yeah. every two weeks. And Dang. that's only for seven months of the year, six months of the year. But we don't get paid in the off season, so. Yeah, you're just splitting and kind of. Damn, so you almost a lot of those guys have to have somebody to bankroll them almost, or or you got to really share share places. Yeah, I stuff. know a lot of guys who get jobs all off season and then try and train and and whatever. But that's that's where the luxury of being picked high in the draft is. is you get this little bonus that you know kind of sets you up to where you can live and and just train and get ready to get to the big leagues. I think, but. What what do you think the dismantling of that, like this season, they didn't have it. You know, they didn't have the minors. And I don't even know. I'm not sure if those guys are still getting paid. Maybe they are. They got little stipends, I think. Uh, but would that be tough to say, like, if you'd have gone through that? I mean, do you, right. what would that have been like? Do you think you still would have been pitching no, a year later? Yeah, I mean, I think I would have played. I would, as I said, I was really fortunate to have kind of a little nest egg to, to oh, fall yeah, back that's on. Right. But what if you hadn't had that, you know? Right. I, I think it's very tough. I think those guys – and the other thing that sucks about that is they did, there's no clue if if and when they were going to play. So it's not like you can walk into Lululemon and get a job and say, hey, uh, you know, I can be here for a year. Right. I can be here for six months. You have to say, listen, I'd love to have a job, but, but I, don't even know I may I be gone stay. in three weeks, yeah. you know, so – that's where it was pretty financially tough. And um, David Price, who we just traded for from the Red Sox, came out and really gave all of our minor leaguers like a 1000 bucks wow. in June, which is just super, super it's cool. Huge. Yeah, it's really know, nice. Um, just to kind of help guys try and stay afloat during this whole thing. Yeah, and just that, that support that other people are thinking about you. Like, hey, you know, somebody right. else is thinking about what's going on with you. Yeah, and he's, he's never played a game for us. We just got him, and he still did that for our guys, which, which I think was really, really cool. And, and some other guys have done similar stuff. And – um, you know, some teams have committed to playing their paying that stipend for a while. And, um, but I, you know, I don't think minor league baseball will ever, ever look the same because you're thinking like we have a low A team in the city I'm from in Lexington that was on the list to be chopped yeah. before all this, let alone after. So, oh, wow. you know, these tiny, small towns, that's, there's just not that many people. So wow. it's hard to, hard to own a baseball team in rural and Iowa, you know? But it's a bummer too, because then the kid, the kids that were going to go there and watch the game, who were then like, "Oh, I want to play this," mm -hmm. you know, who are finding that, you know, filling that space in their head where inspiration lives, right. aren't going to have that. Right. Yeah. Damn. Less less chances, and you know, you're not going to. I don't think you'll have as many kind of Cinderella story like you talked about Mike Piazza. He was like the last round pick or whatever. Wow. You know, I I read his book. I forget what round it was back then they had like 70 rounds he was like a 65th round yeah pick. the last slice of piazza i think was his book <laughs> sorry that was horrible but anyway dude 
but obviously we toss them pretty bad <laughs> in here. Uh -huh. um, uh, oh man, I was going to ask you about we were just talking. We were talking about the minor leagues. Um, you you do a golf tournament? Is that what you do? I do as a yeah. fundraiser. Yeah, so we did our second second one this past year, which was pretty cool. The first year, I had an uncle pass away from kind of long term complications of of child pediatric cancer. So oh. he beat it and then passed away at like forty two. Um, oh, that's they, young, huh? Yeah, he's dad's brother. Yeah, oh, he was my man. dad's older brother. He beat uh, Hodgins at like thirteen or twelve. Oh. But you know, back in the '80s, '70s, they didn't know what they were doing. They were just kind of trying to zap. That's back you when they put you on a jar. Remember, they put a picture on a jar and just yeah, they just see what happens. That I was think. the original like Facebook share, dude. They would put a picture on a jar yep. and set it at the pizza place yep. and raise money. Yeah, but no. So he he passed away. So we did it the first year for that. Uh, we raised like thirty seven thousand dollars, which oh, was that's awesome. Which was cool, and we were so excited. And then Rich Hill, uh, who played with us the last couple of years, started a foundation called Field of Jeans, which didn't know much about we kind of talked a lot he and i ended up becoming really close and talked about he had lost a son which was fucking devastating obviously we Man. you know he told our whole team the story and so this past year we did it for his his new initiative and we raised 100 grand this year which Man. was really really cool it's cool huh so yeah was, i mean you know i think everyone does a does a golf tournament you right. know but it is really fun and and cool and and i think we're doing some good stuff yeah you yeah, know, it sounds like it, man. That's brave of him to even want to, rent, rem, you know, memorialize that. I think even memorializing things can be kind of brave because you have to go through th some of the right. feelings and stuff. Again. Yeah, you know, I, he was super emotional about it, obviously, and I bet um, man. Oh. you know spoke at the event and stuff. And people were just like, "All right, let's we're buying all this shit." And we're in. Yeah, and the, and obviously, you know, the city of Lexington, being from there, is pretty close knit and really cool city, man. Yeah, Lexington's I love great, it there. It gets, you know, a lot of southern cities too get a bit, get a rough rap. Everybody, yeah. especially right now, everybody, you know, the news wants to make the South look kind of bad. Sometimes yeah. I feel like, and that stuff really makes me mad because there's some amazing cities there, man. Yeah. And Lexington's one of them. It's super diverse. Mm -hmm. You get down to the university, man. It's so yeah. much fun. There's the strangest people, dude. I've had some of the strangest times. Yeah. I saw a guy. <laughs> I saw a guy do a, do the worm all the way around the uh, a four way intersection. Yeah, worm Eddie. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Oh, this guy definitely, dude. Look, it looked like he had some miles on his belly. You right. know what I'm saying? Like yeah, this some guy. calluses. Oh, he really? Yeah, he was calloused around the belly button. Um, no, I was gonna. Oh, so one time I got invited. Uh, I used to work as a tour manager for this guy, Josh Kelly, who was a mu who is a musician. And um, he and his brother, they're both musicians, and um, they had a golf tournament because his brother works in that band, Lady Annabellum. Mm. And I had, I got to stay in a, they put us up, it was in Augusta, Georgia, and they put us up in different, you know, and uh, Ozzy Smith was in mine, mm -hmm. which was really, really cool, man. Chris Dolman Blizzard, was in there. Man. He used to play for Minnesota. This is a little mm -hmm. bit before your time. Jim Furyk was in there, golfer. Yeah. And... Um, and it was me and that guy, Dan. Remember Dave versus Dan for the Olympics or whatever? You were probably too young, but it was like mm -hmm. Dave, Dan versus... Dan versus Dave, or Dave versus Dan, yeah. Yeah, they were I both... I remember Man versus Wild. Yeah, the, yeah this, <laughs> this is before that, yeah. This was back when uh, when it was just Man versus Man, dude. <laughs> when Man was less lonely and, and now it's just Man versus Wild. Um, like the Cathalon guys? Yes, yes, the Catholic guys. And this was huge when I was a kid. They were both supposed to go to the Olympics, and I think one of them didn't qualify. And so that was like the big bummer. Um, yeah, Dan versus Dave. Can you find it on Wikipedia too? Thanks, bud. At, at advertising, the campaign was a television commercials. O'Brien and Johnson were favored to win medals in Barcelona, which had recently lost U.S. market share to Nike, was hoping to rebound with their endorsement. D uh when arrived five weeks before the games began, when O'Brien failed to qualify for the American Olympic team by missing the pole vault. Huh. Damn. So yeah, dude. So the whole, all of America's fired up for them to go to the Olympics. That's wild. And then one of them didn't go. Dude, this, uh, this, I wonder where he's at now. Well, so my, my Olympic story, the first guy, or this spring, first spring training, I got to play golf with Michael Phelps, which was one of, no way. It was one of the coolest with things. With that long ever. belly, huh? Hey, I've oh, he's never like a seen, pike, dude. He's, he's like a real, he's like a damn pike. He looks like a fish with a face. Does you know he really? I mean? No, but. <laughs> right. Okay. You're you just see him long. swimming. Yeah. All right. On. I'm telling you, that guy's golf swing. I've never seen so many shoulders. So he wraps 
when he's done that golf club game. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so mobile. It he's was just, awesome. Damn, really? Like, he was a good dude. Yeah, he seemed yeah? to be a cool dude. and Yeah, it was fun. Dang, that's pretty cool, man. Now, golf tournaments, I will say one thing that's amazing about them is the people you get to meet at them. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, that one in Phoenix is crazy, apparently. I still haven't gone. The, what is it? The, the before waste, the U.S. Uh, Open or something? The Waste Management Open. No, it's a PG. That's the one they have the hole where everybody screams and yells. Oh, wow. Have you never seen this? Uh-uh. That's, oh, Michael Phelps yeah, at Yeah, see, waste that's management. at Waste Management because he lives in Arizona, I think. Yeah, put up uh, this. I think it's the 17th hole Waste Management or whatever. Or type in waste management. And it was Michael. We're looking for No, 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 no. Oh. Just put up the waste management. I think it is a 17th hole. Yeah, so this is the only thing in golf like this. 16th hole. They build up this giant stadium yeah. all around this hole. And people can yell the whole time? I think this is Ricky Fowler. He's like pumping up the crowd. It's the only place in golf. <laughs> And they just scream the whole time. Right, really? <laughs> Does Rick see that guy in the jersey? Yeah. It's John Rahm. He played at Arizona State. So this is like his home city, you know? Uh-huh. Because he's from Spain. So he's fired up. Huh? And he so he's wearing an AS... I got one. All right. He's wearing an ASU uni. Damn, Ricky Fowler's damn beautiful for a damn golfer, huh? That's Jordan Spieth. Oh, it is? Oh, sorry, Ricky. Oh, that ain't bad. And so this is a part three, huh? Yeah, it's like a little short. There's Ricky right there in the gray. So they play. So people can yell her. And there's Donald Trump Jr. as the caddy. Do you see that? <laughs> Trump's son looks like the caddy right there with that. It looked like him a little bit. They but, say um, it's like it's like damn club in Vegas around this place. They say it's wild. Wow. Where yeah. is it? It's in Phoenix in like early February, I think. Huh. And so they got a little quiet for when the actual hit, but there was still a lot of chatter because usually yeah. it's dead quiet. Type in uh, Ricky Fowler because he there's one where he full on like pumps up the crowd before he gets to the ball <laughs> and he's like, it's too quiet. And he steps back and starts screaming at him. Place the crowd. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is so awesome. Oh, I'd be so nervous, bro. Look at the guy at the sign. He's usually telling people to be uh, quiet. He's got to be going one last. Try to rip it. Get a little adrenaline from the fans. Wow. He's swung hard, and this is on a good line. Foink. And they're just screaming. The are, you any, are you any good? Walker? I'm all right. Yeah. I'm okay. I did a did a lesson yesterday. We're we're working on the game. Okay. We're working on it. Are there any things about pitching that you correlate over to golf that are that help you? Or? You know what? I think playing baseball and playing golf are actually like you have the basic like you can rotate your hips quick, and so most of us can hit the ball pretty far. Mm -hmm. But in baseball and golf, your work your legs work completely different. So we all have bad swings, even if they look all right, because mm -hmm. our legs don't operate the way they should. I think is is the biggest thing. Um, like hitters don't really play golf much because they feel like it's going to mess with their swing. Ah, so I like when we were that. when we were growing up, like in high school, they'd be like, "I'm going to play golf." They're like, no, you're not. You have a game tomorrow. Right. Like you can't mess up your swing. Right. Don't be thinking about slow play right. swing and sl yeah, huh? Um, I'm trying to think of anything else, man. You got anything, Nick? Mm -mm. I, I was curious. This is. Just small. Who is the arbor arbitrator? Is it someone who played baseball? Is it an the agent? Uh, the, arbitra uh, the arbitrator? Oh, our head guy? Yeah. So the head of the union's name is Tony Clark. He had a pretty successful, like a really successful career in the big leagues. And then we have like his help, not helpers, not the right word. I don't know his official title. His name is Bruce Meyer. He helped with the NBA CBA, with the NFL CBA. So he's a professional arbiter. There's a professor, professional arbiter. Yeah, but the head guy, the guy that comes out and speaks that you've heard him comment, was a player. Tony Clark. Yep. Hmm. Um, so, you know, we have some interesting stuff. We have big group phone calls and, and kind of talk through some stuff. And Wow. Dude, that's totally – I mean, it seems like you're kind of fucking growing up a little, dude. Yeah, I'm trying, man. I got engaged, and, and then now I'm the You got a second up, dog? So second dog. Yeah, we had Nala for about a year. Nala's day off, 21, is, is her – Instagram, the new one, Barrel, doesn't have one yet, but he's my Nala's Day Off? Nala's Day Off 21, yeah. And then Barrel Bueller will be the new one? Yeah, we don't know what we're going to do. He's a Boykin, so Barrel Bueller the Boykin kind of works. Mm -hmm. uh, and a Boykin is what is it? It's like a small Cocker Spaniel, but they're all brown. They all look exactly the same. Okay. 
Um, he'll be about 30 pounds, but I wanted a hunting dog. I do a little bit of duck hunting here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we got that one cause it's the smallest one you can get that can really go do that stuff. Um, but also small enough for, for my fiance to travel with a little bit. Okay. So she likes the dog too. Yeah. She, she is absolutely obsessed with the first dog, Nala, our little, our little French bulldog. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, like we got that one. Love that. We got that one opening day last year. So, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Then we drove down and, and will you get there. one each year? You think you're, no, I, I think this is it for a while. <laughs> two's two's kind of, you know, people have told us that, that puppies are harder than kids and, and, I somewhat believe them. Yeah. Our first kid or our first dog was kind of easy. Nala was like pretty good. This other one just pissed everywhere. Yeah. He's, he's tough. Just but. anarchist. Sounds like a drunk friend. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're tough, you know, but nah, then I just left them in, at home with Mackenzie. So she's dealing with both of them. <laughs> oh, they're in Kentucky right now? Oh, so yeah. will you get to go back at home at all during this stretch? No, or? she'll come out here. Okay. Here, um, she usually does about half the half the season. I don't know what we're going to do this year. We had it all planned out, but obviously that got changed up a little bit. So we'll, we'll figure it out. And you think you'll go head to head with Joe Musgrove this year or not? No, we won't play them unless, oh, play unless them. it's in the playoffs because they're in the East. So normally we would. We played. He pitched against us last year. Who's do you have an arch rival out there that you love to pitch against? I mean, you said uh, Flaherty, but uh, not a single guy. I think for us, it's more teams. Obviously, the Giants are, are big, and you know the Rockies have some a lot of talent over there. So playing them is always a big deal. But that stuff happens more in your division, I think, than anything. Is it fun to play against? Uh, is it fun to play against teams that have? Do you want teams that have a lot of good hitters, or do you are you better if teams are kind of a little? No, bit... I mean I'd rather face your little league team yeah. than, than a good <laughs> yeah, yeah. major league team. The Cub know, clubs, yeah. In, in all honesty, but no, I mean I think I think it's good stuff when you're trying to get ready for the playoffs and things like that. When you face these good teams and get used to, all right, like these guys could legitimately kill me, not kill me, but crush me, you know. So, you know, it takes a little something to get get ready to get go like that. Yeah. What were you gonna say about Charlie Blackman? I think we kind of went off on that or he, he would, and theo have the same hair oh word word and he's the hardest hitter too well he's he has he's had the most success off me in the big leagues ever damn so there's there's a you know there's a little bit of hope obviously for you. that power <laughs> yeah that's that power flow <laughs> what do you attribute it to is there anything about him specifically that you notice you know i i think as we scout you learn like oh this guy hits this pitch really good and this pitch really bad and, and things like that and um you know my strengths as a pitcher what i can do best is kind of his strengths a lot of times you you know you want to stay with your strengths unless a guy has a glaring weakness and he doesn't have any glaring ones. So I just kind of have to go with what I do well, and and he happens to handle it pretty well. Mm. Um, but there's just bad matchups and, and good matchups. There's really good hitters that just I match up well against, or are really bad hitters. You know, against most people that still get do really well against me. That it just that's that's why baseball is kind of a weird game in that way. I think. What about bunters? Do you guys hate it? I think it's it seems dumb, but is it dumb? To, is it seem you know, dumb to you guys? Or is what's it... weird about that is when a guy bunts, like that's our only chance, to, like kind of look athletic. Mm -hmm. And when it's happening, you feel so athletic. <laughs> Do you really? Oh my god! You sprint off, grab and throw it, and then I see it on the replay, yeah. and I run like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, everybody gives me shit about how Let's I run. Let's see if we can see Walker Bueller fielding bunt. <laughs> it, I don't think there's going to be any footage. What is it, bro? What's going on? Is it mechanics? What is it? Yeah, I got bad hips. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you might have dysplasia like my buddy Scott's Australian Shepherd. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, you might, man. I bet that, that athletic Shepherd still runs way better than I do. <laughs> Oh, man. Walker Bueller, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, it was fun, man. Yeah, appreciate it, dude. Best of luck, dude. Congrats on uh, – yeah, that was your first All-Star season, right? Yep. Wow, man. Yeah, I'll see if they can – you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to come to any games, but I'll see if they'll bring you some tickets. I can just send them to your house. You yeah, can. I'll just – dude, I might buy one of the cardboard cutouts. Yeah, we might have to do that. Or we'll send Michael Lennon or we'll send Nick. Dude, we'll give him a day off. <laughs> yeah, we'll get uh, – what we'll do is we'll get some of, some of our buddies and find some bad photos of them and just submit them. <laughs> yeah, Bro, you know what would be fun? If we paid for Brian and Brendan to be out there in the sand. <laughs> with just yeah. some horrible pictures of them. <laughs> yeah, which are a lot of their pictures. We really should. That would be so good. <laughs> find a picture. I guess Brian just got his eyes done or something, <laughs> I heard. Yeah, dude. He got part of his eyes taken send in, out. Send in the picture of him all swelled up. Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> Dude, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll do a little fundraiser or something, and we'll do we'll we'll buy that, and then we'll donate the rest to uh 
to your charity or something like that'd that. That'd be awesome. Man. It would yeah, be something like do that. that. Do that to him and, and maybe Shab after he got knocked out or something. And yeah. Go see. <laughs> yeah, damn. So I was going to hate hearing about that, but I agree with you 100%, bro. That's you know, what we'll do. I don't know these guys. So oh, dude, I would take his ass far, at fucking 240. <laughs> if he could get down to 240, I would take him. I have to gain 60 pounds, but I could do it, bro. I might have to meet these guys before we do it. Maybe that's what we'll do. I'll meet them, and then we'll reveal them the next day. <laughs> there we go. That would be it. If we get it done, man, we'll have to get you over on the uh, Fighter and the Kid, and you'll have to uh, That'd be funny. touch base with them, man. Uh, obviously, man, I had a good time. Enjoy. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, man. And thanks for, uh, yeah, you took me out to the game last year, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I got to bring my friend Steve, dude, we had a blast. We sat right behind Kershaw's family, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Good people, too. Man. Yeah, it was. It was nice over there. Uh, best of luck, man. Thanks, man. We'll see you later now on. Now I'm yeah. just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones. But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you my story Train with a heavy load of mine